Hey guys, it's Sadie. At the end of this video, you will know what type of procrastinator you are and how to overcome it. Let's get right into this. Let's stop procrastinating. First of all, you need to understand why humans actually procrastinate. What is that deep-rooted incentive that makes us want to procrastinate and push things off? Basically, it's a fear or anxiety of the important task that has to be done. Awesome, right? And that's not a very good feeling to feel. So to get rid of this negative feeling and for a short-term pleasure, they just procrastinate and they will push the task off and off and off and off and off. And yes, that does make you feel better temporarily. It makes me feel better temporarily as well. In the long run, why? That's my vitamin timer. In the long run, it will come back to bite you in the butt. Procrastination is also heavily linked to perfectionism, fear of failure, feeling overwhelmed, and anxiety in general. Those are also a ton of factors that can affect what type of procrastinator you are. I have realized by watching so many productivity videos, procrastination videos, lifestyle organization videos, and by doing all of my research, I realized there is more than one type of procrastinator because all of us are super different in our personalities, our values, and our energy levels. I went down such a deep hole of research for this video, and I made a for every single one on how to overcome it. So we're gonna start with the first type of procrastinator. This is really close to home for me and it's the performer. The slogan that I have for this little guy is the I work well under pressure. I'm gonna put that in quotations because that is the excuse. The real reason behind this is perfectionism. So the performer can also be named the perfectionist, but the performer just sounds a little bit cooler. <laughs> the whole premise behind this is if you're tight on time, then there's no way you can even meet your unreasonably high standards that you set in the first place, right? You will subconsciously or consciously make the window of time that you have to complete this task so small, you will push it off until you barely have any any time to do it and then you will work under pressure and you're like okay like I didn't have that much time to do that so that's the reason why I didn't do it perfectly but this is so self-destructive this is something that happens to me and was happening to me when I was doing my online courses I just could not find the motivation to get started because I was like okay if I start this then I know I have to finish it and if I finish it it has to be perfect it's kind of overthinking in a sense you're thinking of all those things that you have to do no one wants to think about all the things you have to do like who wants to do that and all the things you have to do perfectly to your own unreasonably high standards. It's literally working, you're working against yourself. And the biggest challenge that the performer has when it comes to productivity is getting started. The solution to this is to simply set a start date for every single task that you have. I will go into my planner and I'll be like, this is the day that I'm gonna start. I don't even have to get to a midpoint. I don't even have to get to a third of the way done. All I have to do is start because I know that when I start, it will give me that boost of confidence that I need and that kind of domino effect that will give me more inspiration and more confidence that I'm going to accomplish my high standards and meet them. So you're focusing on beginning a task instead of finishing a task and that takes an immense amount of pressure off of you. Setting a start date is the missing step between wanting to do it and to actually starting it. And the hardest part is now halfway done. All you have to do is start and it's a domino effect from there. Next is the self-deprecator. This is the I'm too lazy right now to do this type of person. This is actually very common, especially for people in high school because high school tends to give you a really negative view on education and productivity, or at least for me it did, but it was hard to find like a positive outlook on productivity and getting stuff done. It's because you haven't started yet and you obviously feel bad about that and you're not meeting your own standards, so you start to self-criticize and actually that is kind of justifying why you haven't started. It's like I haven't started because I'm lazy and I'm a piece of poo and I can't do anything right and I can't be productive, so it's kind of justifying it. Doesn't mean that you're actually lazy, you are just making yourself seem like a person that wouldn't get this done so that it makes more sense to you that you haven't gotten it done and definitely in high school I think it is so hard to avoid burnout and I think these people aren't lazy you are just tired and you are going to blame your inaction on laziness or stubbornness but you really just need a break and you need a mental break an emotional break a physical break from what you are doing because it can not only just give you that like mental space to kind of just not do the physical work and focus on yourself it will also just make you more inspired to do it in the long run so I think it's a way better long-term solution rather than just pushing through it, short-term goals, not meeting your standards, feeling worse about yourself again. If you are the self-deprecator, you need to re-energize yourself. You need to re-inspire yourself. You need to reprogram your mind a bit. You need to use your free time that you do have and getting your mind and getting your energy in the place that will help you to be the person that gets that thing done. It seems kind of like a roundabout path to getting there, but it honestly is the most straightforward path and 
the most beneficial long term because then you're just going to be in that high vibe energy and that confidence energy of I'm not lazy. I know how to manage my energy. I know how to manage my time. I am not a procrastinator. It's basically taking care of yourself first so that you can take care of your tasks. You can't pour from an empty cup. Next we have the overbooker. They tend to say, I'm so busy. I don't have time. I don't have time to even start this. My to-do list is too long. I can't get it done, etc. This person usually has a full calendar all the time and they are often really overwhelmed. Interestingly though, a lot of the busiest people that don't necessarily have time for all the stuff to do on their to-do list, they actually end up being more productive than people who have less on their to-do list. And that is all because of momentum. But when busy people find themselves procrastinating, it's usually because they're using their busyness as an excuse or as like an avoidance to the task that has to be done. Rather than facing the task head on or admitting to themselves that they don't want to do it, it's a lot easier to place the blame on saying that they have more important things to do with their time. Their time is so valuable, like why would they waste their time doing this when they can do this? And it's so easy to use that as an excuse because it's literally not a lie. Their schedule is full. They could see all the little color coordinated things that they have in their schedule and be like, I literally don't have time, but it is an avoidance mechanism. And I also want to mention that this is a person that I'm saying kind of creates their own schedule and creates their own busyness. Just making their schedule as busy as possible and excessively busy. I will do something else that's productive like clean my room instead of doing the essay that I have to do. They love to create chaos instead of facing what they need to face right now. The solution is to ask yourself genuinely and honestly, what am I really avoiding? If I wasn't busy right now, what would I be doing? And those simple answers to those questions are literally just going to pinpoint the exact thing that you're avoiding. You'll get to the root of the issue and you'll be like, okay, maybe I could not clean my room today and at least start this essay. But just having that awareness that you are an overbooker and this is a habit that you have when you find that you don't want to do something, you will overbook yourself so that you there's no way you can even start. Just having that awareness, keeping that in mind and working on it bit by bit, day by day will help you. Next is the novelty seeker. This is the person that has a terminal case of shiny object syndrome. I'm going to explain this because this is also me. These people are constantly coming up with new projects to take on and then get bored of them like a week later. They get really intrigued and inspired super easily by the latest trends or what they're currently obsessed with right now and they will be super quick to implement it but they will not follow all the way through. They'll lose motivation super easily. So it's a very like up and down. They gain inspiration super easily and they lose it in no time and it's probably because they're expelling all of their energy in that say first few days of this new project that they're working on and then they just get bored of it and they're like whatever let's not do that anymore because they're not taking consistent action in one direction long enough to actually see results and once they don't start seeing results they lose motivation and then they look for another shiny object it's surprising that many entrepreneurial people actually fit into this category because they have big dreams of starting their own business and being their own boss doing kind of like a passion project as their job and they will go head first into it and give everything that they have into it they will expel so much energy and so much time into this for about a week and then they will start losing motivation and once they don't see those results are going to be like how is this even worth it so they're really focused on the end results and really focused on the shiny object that they saw at the beginning but they're not thinking through all of the obstacles and they're not willing to overcome challenges in order to get where they want to be the solution to this is not pursuing new ideas and new projects that you want to do until you finish your last one and this can be seen in a school mindset where it's like you really want to work on that say art project that you have but you have to do this boring english essay first obviously you're going to have way more inspiration and drive to just jump straight to that art project even if it's due in a literal month i would work on those projects because i was excited and i was inspired to do them then i would push off the one that's literally due in two days just because i didn't have the motivation for it and this is all from reframing your mind into a more positive outlook and if that takes saying affirmations to yourself to make yourself more inspired to do the thing that you don't want to do but just don't let yourself hop from project to project to project without trying to fully finish it first because you're also never going to be fulfilled that way and this is something that you can use in so many areas of your life because it's basically energy management these are some general tips on procrastination that have helped me a ton and that i use literally almost on the daily or whenever i feel like procrastination is coming one is you have to work on your own negativity everyone is so programmed to create excuses for themselves and to justify why they're not doing a certain project that they 
know that they have to do. You can feel the energy shift when you say, I literally hate this project. I don't want to work on this essay right now. I hate this class. I don't even know what I'm learning in it. This is never going to be something that I use in my life versus I'm so grateful that I get to learn this. I'm going to take whatever skills I can from this project and I'm going to use them in other projects and in other areas of my life. I'm sure that I'm doing this for a reason and I know I'm just going to nail this and this will only take me an hour to finish and after that I'm going to reward myself. Keep repeating whatever positive message you can think of even if it doesn't feel true at first. Overcoming your own negativity is the most powerful thing you can do. Clear your mind of the negative clutter and you will get more stuff done. I guarantee you. If you want to get a journal or if you want to meditate, I actually have a journal. If I have negative thoughts towards a certain thing, I will write all of them down and then on a separate page I will write a list of kind of responses to those negative thoughts that affirm to myself why I'm actually doing something. So for example, when I didn't feel like working out, I really need to get to the root of why I actually wanted to work out. But before I could do that, I had to get to the root of why I didn't want to work out because you don't want to be motivated by fear. That is such a short term motivation. But if you're motivated by healthy, renewable energy incentives, it's going to be so much more long term and so much more helpful for you. Make sure that you free your mind of all those negative thoughts. If you put positive thoughts in it, you're going to feel so much lighter. You're going to feel more energetic and you'll have more motivation to not procrastinate. This is something I do probably for every single big project that I have in my life and it's to break the project into manageable parts. This will generate a sense of achievement every single time you accomplish one of the little tasks in your project and it'll make you look forward to the next part because you're just gonna be like yes I did that. Momentum, domino effect, it's gonna give you confidence, it's gonna get the ball rolling. Splitting it up day by day, one I'm gonna do two paragraphs of my essay, next day I'm gonna do two paragraphs, in three days you're gonna be done instead of doing it all in one day. The next tip which you actually might have heard of is the 15 minute rule. If you have a task that you keep putting off I swear if you devote 15 minutes to it and then stop make that a deal with yourself you'll one either be on a roll and complete more than 15 minutes or two you will complete the 15 minutes and then do another 15 minutes the next day even if you only did 15 minutes it's still a start and it's still creating momentum you're still way closer than you were 15 minutes ago this tip is probably the most important tip of the whole entire video stop thinking of yourself as a procrastinator once I actually told myself I am not the type of person to procrastinate I'm the type of person that has unlimited energy, abundant energy every single day to get whatever I need to done. I get all the tasks that I'm not excited about done first. You are a productive person. You're an energetic person. You take inspired action. You can do whatever you want with ease. You overcome challenges. There's like infinite, I'm just like throwing these at you right now. There's like infinite ways that you can convince yourself that you are not a procrastinator. What also helps me to become inspired to be productive is actually watching YouTube videos of other people being productive because that makes me feel like I'm not alone. A ton of other people have a ton of other stuff to do today. I kind of stop feeling sorry for myself at that point and then I just get inspired because I see other people doing it and it makes me want to do it. That was just a really random tip but it actually does help me like when I watch productive vlogs or like workday vlogs um, they make me so inspired just to like get off my butt and do something. Let me know what type of procrastinator you are in the comments. I'm super curious. I am definitely the novelty seeker and the performer. Still trying to work on those. I hope that these tips helped you. If you want more of these types of videos make sure to leave me a thumbs up and comment down below. Go get your stuff done. Go get your to-do list done. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye.